Friends, I'm a new man. I've joined the cult of the tiling window manager. Specifically, one called Aerospace for macOS. I know that there are better ones for Linux. No, I'm not switching to Omachi just yet. I'm staying on good old macOS. And with Aerospace, I get sort of the best of both worlds almost. I mean, it's quite good Aerospace. Is it perfect? It's kind of janky. But considering that it has to fight with macOS and all of its, like do what it does through all of the uh, accessibility APIs, I'm kind of impressed with how well it actually works. So this is what my desktop looks like now. Or maybe you might be a little bit confused about how this looks, but I swear this is just normie basic macOS Tahoe with a little bit of janky stuff on top. So when I open a window, like a terminal here, you see how it uh, neatly tiles itself and there's just one tile, so that means full screen. But if I open another one, it goes next to it, evenly split in half. A third one opens next to it, but I can put tiles inside tiles and I can even stack them like this. That's basically what a tiling window manager is. Uh, you'll also see that in the top left corner, I have a uh, workspaces, which is sort of the same uh, concept as you've probably seen before. But of course, this isn't the ordinary MegaWorks menu bar, this is something else. But most importantly though, I can control all of this with my keyboard. So switching the focus around, uh, you'll see how the bright red yellow border follows the currently focused window. And also switching workspaces. I can do that all from just my keyboard. Everything else I've moved into leader key. I will just go right ahead and cancel all my future plans because I will be no lifing my macOS config from now on. And I'll be the first to admit that this isn't for the faint of heart. Like this is pretty advanced, kind of janky, very keyboard driven. And the macOS keyboard hotkeys space is sort of already kind of crowded. That's why I just have the few global shortcuts and then everything else moved into leader key. If you if you haven't been here before, you don't even probably know leader key, but you're in luck because it's the perfect app. Who made it? Well, none other than... Let me give you just a brief tour of how it's all set up. This is my aerospace config and it's mostly the basics. I won't go too much into detail. I like a bit of padding around the windows so that I can see the red border. And I actually thought that I wouldn't, but I kind of do, it's nice. And then these are the only uh, bindings, uh, global bindings at least. I have Alt, I mean Option, and then the Vim movement keys to move focus around, and then a Shift Option, also Vim motion keys to go through the workspaces. That's more or less it. I have a single mode called resizing mode in which I can, uh, let me show it. So if I go into sizing mode, I can uh, decrease and increase window sizes and then exit. And that's, that's all of it. Everything else is in leader key. So let's see leader key. Here we are. Everything in the W group is uh, dedicated to being aerospace commands. So as you see, I've named the uh, four, actually five um, initial workspaces here after the uh, topmost uh, keys on the keyboard. My keyboard is weird and doesn't have like numbers readily available. So, uh, but the ASCII letters are, so I've just named them after like those and it works. So W, Q is gonna take me to the Q workspace, R, W, E, so on and so forth. Last one is special, that's uh, the T workspace, and this is dedicated to my external monitor. Um, so main monitor has these four, and then the external one always just has one workspace, which works for my brain. And I guess might as well get that out of the way. Like this is configured, to how my brain works. And that's kind of the deal with these things that you have to sort of figure out your own way and how it can make sense to you because it doesn't really make sense until it uh, does, I guess. And this is how it makes sense for me. So 
take everything as uh, inspiration and configure it how you might want to or don't. I can totally fully support you giving up on this before you even start. So we have uh, join, which is when uh, you join tiles together or move windows um, inside the same sort of uh, area. And we have um, L for the layouts. So we have uh, floating, accordion, tiles. We have move to move windows around. So uh, yeah, that's it. Workspaces, move to workspace or move in any direction. F to go full screen, we have capital F to uh, flatten the workspace tree. And we have a capital R to reload the config. And we have S to go into sizing mode, which is what I showed you before. Uh, yes, but the brilliance here is how we only have to remember option to shift focus and shift option to sh uh, switch workspace. Everything else can go into lead key. And what's great about lead key is how all of the keyboard shortcuts are nested. So uh, of course I have W for everything window related, but I also have groups for all sorts of other things. But inside W, we also have this uh, cheat sheet in leader key, which helps you like at this point, my fingers remember this weird setup because like I said, is what's what was in my brain. I just put it into Tommel. But before you get so far, you'll have a, like a nice legend where you can look up uh, what even was the key that I bound for whatever, whatever it was. The red borders come from a thing called janky borders. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I guess it's all in the name of how well it works and it doesn't disappoint. I have it configured to be round, to be width of seven and a half to be a uh, retina and be red, and you can configure which uh, applications to ignore. The top bar is something called sketchy bar, which you can also configure in any way you want. So I have my workspace uh, sort of um, overview up here with uh, icons for the um, like common, common apps, current window title. This is a uh, things, the to-do manager, uh, integration. So it shows the topmost thing in my today's list. And if I click it, it opens things. This is the calendar. It shows the next event, the next upcoming event for today. And uh, as you see, it's a good day. Yay! Then we have a uh, battery status and the clock. And that's it. I mean, it surprises me actually how little I was using the uh, ordinary menu bar. Like, and if I have to get to it, it's just automatically hidden like the dock is. So it's just a matter of like holding your mouse in the top right corner and you get all of this mess. Much nicer with this just plain over overview. Configuring a sketchy bar, so that's janky borders and sketchy bar. <laughs> uh, configuring it is a matter of uh, setting up some files in your dot files uh, and it's sort of like source related it's just running commands uh to sketchy bar and i wish i could tell you that i've uh, spent a bunch of time setting this up but nowadays you just ask claude or codex or amp to do it so yeah, I barely know how it works, but I have it configured exactly how I wanted it and everything sort of works. So would I uh, recommend you do this? I don't know. I guess if you like fiddling and if you're curious, uh, I thought that I would hate tiling window managers and I thought for years actually, and I kind of prefer it now. So there's that. One thing I really enjoyed about this process was just seeing how well leader key fits into a setup like this. Like once you accept how much faster being keyboard driven is, like how much more uh, effective it is, and you realize how quickly the key namespace uh, is like is used up, there's just no way around like namespacing things. And leader key makes it so easy to just like shove everything window related into the W group. 
and you still have the whole alphabet open for everything else. Like everything your heart desires can have a hotkey. What I would recommend though, is that you spend a little time on your own setup. Anyway, this was a brief introduction to how I use aerospace and leader key together. See you in the next one.